good. And those gadgets that are featured on the channel that are easiest to build are understandably also the most popular. But sometimes it's nice to spread our wings, right? So I know that there are followers of the channel that are up to the challenge. So here's the latest gadgets to the playlist. HS402W CAN has everything needed to scope most CAN bus protocols. Typically CAN bus work would require you to drag out a breakout box. This is its own breakout box. Through the four position selector, it will do the high speed CAN, connecting us to pins number 6 and 14. It will do J1850, the protocol used prior to 2008, connecting us to pins 2 and 10. The medium speed CAN connecting us to pins 3 and 11. And the single wire communication, pin number 1 used on GM products, pin number 7 which is the K line. And this work typically means dragging out an oscilloscope. Here again, no need. This gadget has its own built-in oscilloscope. And no need to drag out the laptop either or none of the cables that connect all these devices. This gadget is two-channel Wi-Fi. It beams the waveform directly to your phone. There are no batteries required. The device is powered directly through the DLC and it's broadcasting a Wi-Fi access point which the phone connects to and through the H-Scope app and with the selector switch set to J1850 which is the protocol for this 2002 F-150 we have a look at its waveform. It's that easy. The 2011 Ford Fusion uses a modern day high speed CAN. Selector switch on high and there's our high speed CAN. Switch over to medium speed and here's our medium speed CAN. And not being tethered means that we get to bring the waveform with us here should we need to poke around. So let's head out to the studio where I'll give you a brief overview of what's involved in this gadget. At one end is the DLC connector. At the other end is the two throw, four position rotary switch. This is an MP1584 buck converter. It sits in this compartment and will take the 12 volt from pin 16, convert it to 5 volt for our circuit boards. This PCB stack also has its place. And it was specially put together so that it could fit in this slim box. HS402 to ESP32 Wi-Fi adapter, a PCB that was developed by Mikkel, a member of our Telegram H-Scope group. It's a direct replacement to my through-hole board uh, that I featured when I built my HS402 Wi-Fi. So the first step in the sequence is to solder these male headers onto the PCB. They come in long pin side from the underneath and are soldered on top here. STM32 F411 board comes next and we solder the headers on this side. Next to go on is the ESP30 pin board. Note the extra little spacing I've added here. But before soldering it on, now is a good time to flash the firmware on the STM32 F411 board while we still have easy access to the boot buttons here. These pins don't protrude enough to make a proper connection with the USB to TTL cable. So I've added these extensions here temporarily. Follow the flash method in gadgets number 114 for STM32F411. These extensions can then be removed and the excess solder wicked and the board can be inserted into the HS402 PCB. A few points here. This build is predicated on the HS402 Pro V2.0 board. It's a option one build. The ESP32 flash procedure is described in gadgets number 138. Granted that a STM32 F411 firmware update would be difficult on this build, but HS402 Wi-Fi development is fairly mature and firmware version V1.7 at the time of this video is robust. And the need for the low profile of this build so that it fits in that project box trumps everything. The dongle is kept slim so that it can fit in recessed DLCs in some vehicles. The pinouts from the rotary switch to the DLC connector are provided in this diagram.
I used DuPont ribbon cable to keep things organized. The inputs from the selector switch go directly to the center pin of the BNCs. And here the 1584 has been wired to the DLC and the output to the PCB board. As always, all files are shared in the description and help is available on the 8scope Telegram group. Thanks for watching guys.